Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we're going to be doing front brakes, rotors, and the, uh, the actual hardware kit that holds the brake pads into the mounting bracket itself. Uh, I'm going to bring you up front, I'll show you what tools you're going to need, and uh, then I'm going to explain to you how to do it, and then we're going to talk about it as we go through it, I'll show you step by step exactly how to, uh, to, uh, to get these brakes done. So come on up front, I'll show you what it looks like, and uh, we're going to get started. Okay, this is an example of what you're going to need to actually get the brakes done. You're going to need some synthetic brake grease. You're going to need a driver like this to take the uh, screw out that holds the uh, rotor to the mounting um, uh, bearing or the, uh, the hub. Um, if you don't have this, I'm going to show you how to do with the screwdriver using this, this driver right here to get the screw to come right out. We may need a file to clean off some of the rust. We're going to need a small pry bar like this one here. Uh, we're going to need a tool like this to clean off any rust and something to push the brake pads back in. You're going to need a couple of ratchets. The, the longer the extension of the ratchet, the better you are. Uh, this is a 17 millimeter. This is a 12 millimeter. Um, this is the new brake pads I was telling you about. This is the new hardware kit that we're going to replace. And of course, this is the new rotor. Now, I did clean this rotor off already with brake cleaner to get the grease off it because when it's actually in the warehouse, they do cover it with, with grease. So, uh, all right, so that's pretty much it. We are going to use something like this too, just a piece of wire or a hanger or whatever you have to hold the brake caliper up and out of the way so it doesn't interfere where we're working. So, uh, all right, let me bring you over there. I'll show you what to do and we're going to continue. Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and you see these screws that are in here, these Phillips head screws. Sometimes these can be really kind of rusty and difficult to get out. So we're going to hit that with that driver that I told you about and we're going to get those out of there. Uh, first thing we're going to do before we do anything is we're going to come up underneath the bottom over here with a uh, pry bar and we're going to push that piston back in. So, uh, alright, let me get you set up and uh, let's get started. Okay, now these screws can be pretty tight in here. Sometimes they come out, and sometimes they don't, which they're not coming out in this case here. They're pretty tight. Oh, now that one did come out. All right, but now, if it does not come out, don't go crazy, don't, uh, don't strip the screw out, because the worst thing you can do is strip the screw. What you do is you come in here with this metal drift, like I tell you here, you put it up against the screw right here, and you just hit it pretty firmly, just like that. And most of the time, it'll snap loose and it comes right out. Which it did. It comes right out. Now, if it didn't come out and it was very tight, you can use something like this here. This is a driver. And what this does is we, we put it on the screw like this here. And then we take a hammer and we hit it in the back. And that actually will rotate that screw out while pushing in at the same time. That's not the case here. We were able to get it out without using that. So we're just going to take this screw out right now. And we'll put that off to the side. We are going to use them. A lot of guys say they throw them away, but don't do that. All right, I'm going to bring you up here now. I'm going to show you how you want to push that back in. You take a pry bar, a small little pry bar like this, and you come up in the front over here. Let's see. See if I can get you in here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I hope you can see right there. All right, you come in the back right over here with this pry bar. And you just put it up against the brake pad. And you pull it. And you'll notice that it's pushing all the way back in. You want to push that piston back into the bore as far as you can. So now it's pushed in all the way, but now we want to check these slide pins here and here to make sure that they're sliding correctly. Now after you push that piston back in, this should be able to slide back and forth pretty freely. And as you can see, it slides back and forth. We are going to have to lubricate it because it is a little stiff, but that does move okay. So we know these slide pins here are working okay. Alright, next thing we're going to do now, after we broke that loose, we're going to come in here. Get you over here so I can show you. I hope you can see, all right? 
I'm going to come over here. I'm going to break this loose here. Maybe you can see a little better like that. Okay, we'll break this loose here. And we'll break it loose here. Now before you before you take either one of these bolts out, you make sure you break them both loose first. I am going to have to reach around. And then we take these two screws out here. Don't lose them because you're all going to need to, uh, to replace them. caliper and we use that hanger that we had and just bring it off to the side like this and just secure it up and out of the way just like that for now. We'll take our brake pads out and now we're going to break this bolt here loose that's the 17 millimeter there and the 117 millimeter right here. Now obviously, if you have an air gun, you can do it. If you have a, uh, an electric gun, you can do it. But if not, you'll probably be doing it with a ratchet, just like I'm showing you right here now. Okay. Now we're not going to lose these bolts. We do need to put these back in. mounting bracket out just for now. We're going to come back to this in a little bit and then we're going to replace these these uh, clips here. Now this row that comes right off, if it didn't, they make a tool that you could pull it off with or if it's stuck and you can't get it off, you could bang it in the back with a hammer and knock it off like that too. There's lots of different ways. You can check out some of my other videos. You can check out some of my other videos and it'll, it'll show you different examples of how to remove the rotor. Now if this face here is, is rusted, you'll need to clean it off. This one actually is nice and clean so we're not going to have to worry about it. We're going to slide our new rotor back on and line up those screws in here that we previously took out. screw them in as far as you can by hand. Now you don't have to bang this in like I'm going to do. You can just tighten it in as tight as you can with a screwdriver, but I always just tap it in just like that. Right. Now, next thing we're going to do, I'm going to try to do this up in front right here for you. These clips here come off. You just grab them, pull them, and they come right out just like that and that's trash. Same thing on the bottom here. Pull it and they come right out just like that and I just want to point one other thing out to you also. If this is rusty in here you'll need to clean that rust off whether you use a file or sandpaper or whatever you use you'll need to clean it off. I don't have to do it because this as you can see is nice and clean so we're in good shape. I always put a little bit of silicone underneath here like this and this and now we'll get our new hardware and we'll reinstall that. Now there really is no way that you can make a mistake 
because this just fits right over the top like that and it just pushes like this and it snaps right in there same thing up on the top right here just like that and it's in place just the way it's supposed to be next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these slide pins here out and we're going to clean them off they're going to go back in the same holes that they came out of because one of them has a rubber uh, washer on it, the other one does not. Alright, so you just take this out and we can use some brake cleaner. There's brake cleaner on this rag I might add. We're just going to wipe that off just like that. We're going to put a little bit of this synthetic brake grease on here. You don't need a whole lot, you're just going to use a little bit put it in, make sure it spins nice and freely, and make sure that that rubber seal pops back up. See this seal right here? Make sure it pops up into that lip. All right, then we'll take this one out here. We're gonna clean it off too. A little bit of that synthetic grease. I will add this too. Try not to put any grease on this end over here because it may make it a little bit difficult to get it back in there. All right, this goes back in here like this. You push it and turn it and it pushes right back in. And then remember what I told you about that little seal right there, right? It has to pop back up just like that. Okay, now every place that the brake pad is going to touch, you have to put silicone on it. It's very important that you put silicone because it'll make everything slide nice and freely, just like that. Okay, now I just want to point this out to you too. You see that this brake pad here has got the indentation of the piston touching right there? You want to make sure you put the correct pad on the correct side. You see this indicator is here and this one is here? The other side, it would be a mirror image, it would be down over there. So make sure you put the correct shoe on the correct side. All right, now we're going to take this. I always put these shoes in here, or pads I should say. It's a little bit easier than trying to do it in the car. It goes in nice and free, just like that. And it moves really nice and easily. Same thing on this side over here. Put it in here, just like that. And then we're going to put this over the top of the rotor, squeeze them together. And then we're going to take those bolts, those 17 millimeters that we previously removed, and screw them back in. Make sure you screw them both in by hand first before you tighten up the, uh, the, the top or the bottom. And then once they're caught, now you can tighten everything up tight. pads are in. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our caliper. We'll bring our caliper over. Now remember what I said about any place that the brake pad is going to touch, you want to put a little bit of silicone, which even includes the piston here and this part here of the mounting bracket that I mean up the uh, caliper which is going to go over that that mounting bracket and it's going to touch right into the brake pads. Alright, so we put it over the top just like this and we push these pins to accommodate the, uh, the caliper and now we catch both of our bolts by hand screw them both in until they're both caught 
Make sure that your mounting bracket fits in here just where it's supposed to here. I mean your slide pins and here. And now we can screw them in as far as we can. And we're going to tighten them. We're going to grab our 12 millimeter and we'll tighten these down nice and tight. And that's it. All right, so we're all done. All right, let me get these gloves off and we're going to recap exactly what we did. Okay. Okay. We made sure that the face of the, uh, where the bearing is here, is nice and clean. We put our rotor back on. We screwed in those two Phillips head screws that we previously took out. We cleaned the rotor with brake cleaner, which I did before I even started this video. We put our mounting bracket back on. We tightened up the 17 millimeter here and down on the bottom. We installed our new hardware kit. We lubricated every place that the brake pad is going to touch. We lubricated the slide pins, the top one, as well as the bottom. Lubricated down here. And last but not least, we tightened up those two 12 millimeter bolts here on the mounting bracket and the caliper to hold it in place. Make sure that these little pins are in place where they belong right there. You can see where there's only, it only fits in one way. That flat area there has to fit in there. And this here. And that's it. We're all set. Right? Okay, that's it. The brake job's all done. Now before you drive the car, make sure you get in there and you pump the brake pedal to bring the pedal up higher before you go ahead and drive it. Now we did do the other side already. That's finished. So we're all done here. Alright, we're going to put the wheels on, road test it, and make sure this job is done and done perfectly. Alright, if you have any questions or comments, you need to talk to me about anything, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.